Okay, I'm back again. You're probably going to get tired of me today. Go on, Austin. Go on. Um, but I got a really good question, and I wanted to finish up with um, this basic issue of autosomals and why and mtDNA matches real quick. But I got a great question from Kevin. Slayton, he is always wonderful and participates, and he had an excellent question about mtDNA, and so I'm going to answer that question, but I'm going to finish up this real quick. Thank you for being so patient with me today. I, I do take care of my dad, and um, so sometimes he has needs that are not always planned, um, but we got it took care of, and, and I'm back again. Okay, so where we were at here is these three male when you say to me, I have an autosomal match to you, and it's a Perkins or a Goins or a Powell or whomever, we have to establish paternal lines so that we can determine which one you're talking about. And as far as the Goins information that's out on the Goins, family um, and the Osceola line, the uh, Powells and the Warwicks and the Williams and that. You know, these guys matched King Ramesses III of Egypt. And so here you go with an Egyptian North African E. Haplo. So unless you look at those DYS numbers on the male lines and know which ones. So you got to work the genealogy when you got a match. And this is why we included that pedigree so that you can sit down and either work with the donor that you matched and work their pedigree and try to figure it out. Um, you've got to know, have a good grasp on their, on their pedigree so that you can know what line you are talking about. Okay, because if you say to me, I have a, a match with you, on a Perkins line, but I don't have, she doesn't have a Perkins line there, and I don't have a Perkins line there. What could be a Goins, he's, that person is matching. And so establishing these paternal lines and these maternal lines is vital and important. And this falls into the question that Kevin asked. And I'm going to read that question really quick to you. It was, it was an excellent question. It says, um, thank you for all you do, Stacey May. You're awesome. Thank you, Kevin. You're pretty freaking awesome yourself. Um, thank you for the great question, too. I think this will be very helpful for everyone. Um, for 25 years now, my dad and I have researched his case, um, grandmother Molly and her three known siblings through Ancestry.com, autosomal DNA tests. He and I do have confirmed matches to the great, the grand great, grandchildren of Molly's two younger siblings that co corroborate our paper trail we've gathered over the years. This is our problem. There are no ancestral trees to our closest matches and previous attempts to contact those matches have gone unreciprocated. Amidst the thousands of fourth and sixth cousins, dad and I have distant case relatives who have plenty of credible sources attached to their trees. Sadly, our case family line has no living male heirs to test. What are some strategies we can implement to help us determine which DNA match is closely related to our case family line? Okay, well, I kind of went over a little bit of this in the second video, um, but let me let me try to let me try to go over this. What I would do whenever I have an mtDNA or a Y DNA match, either one. Okay, it, first of all, it depends on what kind of match. Is it a full sequence mtDNA match? Is it a full 37 marker Y DNA match? Do you have any genetic distance? All of this needs to be kind of taken in. But <coughs> let's just assume for our purposes that your match sorry um, that your match is a full sequence mtDNA because he's asking about mtDNA so let's say 
your full sequence match to another person who does not have a GEDCOM listed with their MT um, DNA. So the first thing that I do whenever I get MT DNA and Y DNA matches is I immediately we're going to have a genetic distance Okay, and what we're assuming is there's zero here, okay? So we're going to have a full sequence. I hope that's the way it is, Kevin. If not, um, I'll try to explain it the other way, too, with one and two and three. I don't generally work three steps, two steps. Most of the time, I will work one steps and zero steps. Okay, so then you've got the tester. This is kind of like the way the match results show up for mtDNA. And then you've got um, farthest ancestor. Okay, so you got a, gener a, a zero genetic distance and the tester's name, which is irrelevant really. Um, but right here, the furthest ancestor is where you would start working. If this donor does not have a tree, a jet comb there so that you can look at their pedigree, and they are unresponsive, but they do have their furthest ancestor listed, say it's um, Amanda, Jones, okay, uh, born 1813, Alabama. All right, and and they're unresponsive. They have not responded to your match. They are not allowing you to know, but you do have this information right here. Okay, so take this information over to Ancestry and work their pedigree yourself. All right. I work pedigrees all day long every day that don't belong to me searching for mtDNA and yDNA matches. I mean, I hardly ever write to those people because as in your situation, Kevin, um, so many people uh, don't respond and mostly it's because they don't know. Okay, so sometimes we have to work their genealogy for them, and that's why we put a pedigree in with your matches. You know, I gave you a little pedigree chart on that new thing that's going to be in the handbook. Um, but that's so that you can go back either with their cooperation or without. And if there's more than one zero genetic distance, I work back to Amanda Jones, you know, get it, dig around. I know she's not yours, but either one of her sisters. It has to be one of her sisters is yours. So you need to find out as much as you can about your match and work their genealogy. Amanda could be yours. But, you know, you could come off of a different daughter. So you're going to have to work that. I know that's a difficult situation, but I, I end up doing it dozens of times a week um, and I find out way more because most of the time if they don't have this information listed here they don't know and um, perhaps maybe they're an adopted and they only go back to say their mother or them maybe they don't know beyond that and so they usually don't respond because they don't know and and that's just bad luck I mean that's just Pray for more people to test and maybe hook up some other matches. Okay, and this is the other thing with mtDNA matches and yDNA matches too. Um, Marilyn's case that we had up here earlier, she had one exact 100% 
mtDNA match. A full sequence match to a Virginia and I'm just going to put Native American Cherokee living at Tahlequah currently. Okay, she's Native American. And her farthest back that she traced her lines was what was that girl's name? Um, obedience Biddy Collins Co. Now Fortunately, Virginia had everything worked out for Maryland. But we haven't gotten very far because we've been learning, too, over the years about how to trace this out. So, obedience, Biddy Collins, was like born, let's say, 1790. She um, was the daughter of, we know she was the daughter of Spanish Peg, Peg, and I think she was a, Spanish Peg was a Collins, married to a Collins, but I think she was a Mullins. Anyway, um, no, I think she was a Collins too, but you'd have to look it up, but I need to work on this. Okay, so... What Marilyn's first thing she would need to do here is start with her furthest known ancestor, which was Serena Wilson. And she knew she was from Tennessee and about what her birth date was like. It was the early 18 probably about 1830, somewhere in there. And she lived in Louisiana for a while. And they did have a family legend that she went back to Tennessee with some Andersons. And if you look at their children, she was married to the Doyle Doll up there. They have a son named Anderson. Um, well, um, Serena Wilson Dole. Okay, so she had a child named Anderson. But anyway, so this woman here is sort of a dead end because she disappeared off a wagon train going back to Kentucky. And um, we know she was with the Anderson, which was probably a brother of hers, or it could have been her father. Um, but we do know that this woman right here is an exact copy for this woman right here. There is big missing gaps here between Serena Wilson and Spanish Peg. You have to fill it in. It's working backwards, actually. So you would need to study Spanish Peg and Obedience Biddy Collins and their connections back to Virginia so that you could find your Serena Wilson. Now, it'd be helpful if you did some autosomals and ran across some X matches, which Galen can help you with those, but X matches are on the female, but that can be on any female in your genome, not just your mtDNA. I think. Well, I'm pretty sure. So, we'll find out about that. Alright, so that's the best I can answer for you, Kevin, is to continue to work this genetic genealogy between that match. Hopefully, they have their furthest ancestor up there. Not always, and so you're just stuck until somebody else tests, and then you can 
find their oldest ancestor and work back to yours. Because some way or another, they all connect. They have to. They come from the exact same mother or the exact same father with Y DNA. So it's the same thing with Y DNA. And so whenever I work through a Y DNA is the same distance or the same process basically. Okay. I'm going to keep my board a little bit clean so I don't ruin it. I've already ruined a couple of them. Just, I'm just using them so much and after a little while the finish kind of gets wore off. Okay, so if I was working a male, say uh, um, my, uh, my Y DNA comes back and um, we'll start again with genetic distance. Always work your closest first. I don't even bother with three, to be honest with you, and I rarely bother with two and hardly ever with one because you generally find um, at least one, but not always. So, kind of have to wait for other people to test. But this is the tester. And. This is oldest known ancestor. And this is this is not important. Uh, they have a JITCOM. And say that my um, genetic match is um, Oh, Williams, but I'm testing a Goins, and remember there's six of them, all interrelated with our families, but separate Y DNA. We do not have a match for Y DNA with any of the Jack Goins, but we know we're related through autosomals. That needs to be figured out. I don't think Jack has a jet, jet match number. If anybody knows if he does, let us know. We'd like to compare. Um, so I would find this guy. Um, and if the tester doesn't have a jet com and doesn't know their pedigree, or anything else then I of course anyway would have to go back and work the Williams line and try to figure out how this man's male lines are the exact same as these other male surname lines but they carry a different name and and you can generally get to the bottom of it we've gotten to the bottom of this Williams group. I mean, there's still a lot of questions kind of surrounding them, but really not really because we understand that William Billy Powell, who was Osceola, who, whose descendant, male descendants also matched this group of men. Um, there was, you know, during the uh, Creek and Indian Wars and then whenever he gave himself up, there was a group of 300 plus women, children, and just a few elderly and um, one or two headmen. I think Jumper was the only headman left, but he died at New Orleans. But after Osceola passed away, they loaded all of those Seminoles onto a boat from um, Sullivan's Island um, and took them, um, the Mounted Cherokee did, which were our family too, um, took them to New Orleans and then put them to march to Oklahoma to Indian Territory. And supposedly they got to Ozark Mountains and they ran away and were never seen again. Well, then these group of men 
with the Williamses is included and the Goins and all of them start emerging and sweat. So we got Williams, sweat, Goins, Warwick, Powell. One genetic distance to Perkins. Okay, well, who's the oldest ancestor here that we can find? That's what you need to figure out. So, if the person doesn't have this information, you'll have to work it yourself. And um, so, on these lines, we got that Margaret Cornish's supposed husband, which was Robert Sweat. And then you have the Goins, but unrelated to Jack Goins, who claims the John Gawin line. Warwick, which was um, Reese. We trace him back, but not very far to the Lumbee. His uh, Reese Warwick sister ended up in Arkansas. Uh, she may have been a wife to Osceola. Okay, so Robert Sweat, we trace back to, I think, 1670 Jamestown. But William Williams, we trace him back, I think, to like 1630. So I'm looking at William Williams as the oldest, if that genealogy is correct. Okay, I mean, this is, um, you know, before a period where there's a lot of, um, documentation on these mixed bloods, but however, um, he actually has some good documentation. And this line came through Nancy, Nancy Ward, who was a Cherokee progenating female and probably also, you know, part of this group. Uh, I, I, uh, you know, this the group of Maryland's, but, you know, we just have to do autosomals. We just have to keep trying. But just figure out whichever way you can go as best I can say on that. And we'll have all kinds of worksheets to help you do this. And this is why we included that little pedigree. I'm not going to keep you long. Um, check out 1619 Genealogy. Um, help us locate Margaret Cornish's female descendant so that we can test that. And then this is so fun right here. Finding Dora. We're finding Margaret. We're going to look for Margaret, but we found Dora. Dora Sweat. All right. I was going through some things in my grandmother's. And I'm not sure where it, she got it, obviously from a family member. But oh, I'm going to bring it up there and show it to you. It is a small calling card. Sorry. Okay. I've had it for a lot of, a lot of years. And um, I got it from some of my grandmother's things that obviously belong to my Granny Goins or Nancy Perkins because I ended up with a lot of things from Nancy Perkins as well. But I found Dora. I found Dora Sweat. Thank goodness Vicki Henry helped me and she posted something to Noah Tillis and um, the Ellis girl about, uh, are you from Dora Sweat and you needed to get their information to me? 
And I was like, Dora, Dora, Dora Sweat. Oh my gosh, I have this calling card. So that is going home. That's going back to the family. So we found Dora, and I'm returning Dora to Vicki Henry. And so she will have um, something from her great, 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 great grandmother. So that was really exciting. I love that. Uh, I love um, finding these kinds of things and getting them back to the family. That's just super big bonus for me. Um, like I said, I've had that little card for, I don't know, 40 years maybe. <laughs> Right, and so we just found Dora, and so congratulations to Vicki Henry and Noah Tillis and um, Laurel Ellis. Um, you're going to get your, it's a birthday card, a little Victorian birthday card, and I will exchange it for some information on Dora Sweat. Okay, thank you everybody for um, being patient with me today, and um, <laughs>